Hello and welcome to Chili Bee Gaming. I'm Evie and today we're back with some more Alone in the Dark, Emily's story as part of our Spooky Saturdays playlist. And last time we made it here to the riverboat. So let's get into it. Zoop. Waha, yes. Not a... Not exactly in the best shape of its life, but, but you know. Oh, hello. What have we got here? A whole heap of nothing. Oof. God knows what's out there in the swamps, the bayous. Okay. In all fairness, who knows what's what's in here? Oof. It seems um rather overgrown. Oh! All right. Oh, really? Come here, you wretched little vermin. Die in a hole. Oh, bullets. Hey, shotgun shells. Hmm. Well. Good God. Whew. That was a little bit of a shock, I will not lie. Kind of scared me a little. Ugh. Gross. Ugh. Stinky. Very stinky. Okay. Oh, more bullets. Perfect. Give me a lot of shotgun shells. That's concerning. Very concerning. The boat has uh, run aground. Crashed right into the bayou. Mm. If I get the motor running, I could try backing into the river. Possibly. Okay, let's just... Um, take a look. Around here. Ah, locked. Curse it. Can't go over that way, okay. So what's down, first of all? I mean, I think even if we get this boat running, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Because it's absolutely busted up. To all hell. We go in here? Jeremy, where are you? What's this? Broken compass, Alanya. Marvellous. Hmm. Anything else? Ah, more bullets. Beautiful. What are those things? They look like eggs. That's a little concerning. Yes, because we went there, didn't we, with um, Eddie. Okay. Well, we picked up Alanya. That's good. go anywhere else I don't think so okay the only way is up what the what a, what the hmm oh it's it's okay I just wondered what that string was for, or the rope, rope string, whatever you want to call it. Okay, anything else? Any yaps or anything of any use here? Can't go up that way, obviously. I already know that. Anything here? Ugh. Hmm. Okay, well, let's go up. What's this? Bullets. Bell? It's a bell. The red lantern. What does the red lantern mean? Does it mean something, or does it not mean anything? Alright, well, we can't go in there. That's fine. Um... 
Okay, we can go down. Okay. Did it just run off? Okay! It didn't run off, it jumped. Oh, horrible little thing. Oh, wait, did it come back in? Ugh! Ugh! Absolutely disgusting little creatures. What have we got here? Nothing. Good grief. What a waste of time. Ugh! Oh. Beaten up for nothing. Well. Mm. Right. Go out there. What's in this suitcase? Ooh, more bullets. Marvellous. Okay. Okay. Nothing else for us here. It's further up this end. Yeah. Locked. Hmm. Anything around this way? More things to throw. Can we get in this side? Yes, we can. Okay. Ah. Nothing. More hatchets. Some aid. Sledgehammer. Nothing. Good grief. A whole lot of nothing, really. Can unlock this. Perfect. Well, that will work very well in our favour. Right here. All right. I can break this. I just need something to hit it with. Like a sledgehammer. That's blood. Oh dear. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, slide through here. Right. Valves. Empty gas can. Yes. Anything in here? No. I think it just needs fuel to run. Hmm. Well, shut off this valve. Nothing and nothing. Brilliant. Nothing up here. Ooh, more bullets. I like the bullets. They'll certainly come in handy. Um, there we go. Brilliant. Full gas can now. Great. Can we go in here? No. Hmm. Well, that's that. Okay. Well, that's got the engine running. Yeah. 
Oh, God. Yeah. very slow. Could we take the hatchet instead, maybe? Like that? Yeah, there you go. Hatchet might be might be better for us, I think. Oh. Can we not use the hatchet? Good God. <sighs> Alright. Well, this is psychotic. Ideal, but what's this? Something? More bullets, perfect. Good grief. I can hear one of those awful monsters. Ah. This is more bullets, perfect. Yep. Blew the mother away. <laughs> God. Right. So we're fully, fully loaded here. Yep. All right. Well. Any more for these idiots roving about? Good God. Whoa! Are you under the impression that you died? Yes. No. I was supposed to die. What does that mean to you? That you were supposed to die? I'm the catalyst. I had to die to make the story happen. What story? What are you referring to, Jeremy? Thirty years ago, Frederick needed me to die. Jeremy! You're not making any sense. Yeah. Oh, okay. Come back. Find your focus. Uncle? I cheated everyone. I didn't play my part. I escaped my doom. This didn't... Again, find your focus. Jeremy! Now everything is wrong. <laughs> Nothing is in place. Hey, listen to me. We're gonna drown. Calm down, Miss Hartwood. You're not in any danger. But, Jeremy, he, he was here, wasn't he? Miss Hartwood, I am beginning to suspect your family curse is catching up with you. Have you ever talked to a doctor about your condition? No. No, I, I was just confused. I thought I saw him for a moment. I'm fine. I'll let you be. Miss, I want you to know I'm here to help. If you need me. Dodge. Ooh, hella dodge. Good grief. 
Alright, well... Guessing, guessing... We have to pay Dr. Gray a visit? Really? Go through there. Alright. We have to go up the stairs? Maybe. I can hear lots of whispering. Go in here. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, everything's locked. Can we go in here? We can. Why did that just open? Can we... No, I take it we can't go through there. Okay, so we have to go through here. Okay. So this is Gray's apartment, isn't it? Do not disturb, Lanya. Marvellous. Look at that. Okay. <gasps> Miss Hartwood, lock the door, will you? I'd rather not run into dear Dr. Gray if I can help it. Okay. This feels strange. So very strange. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's take a look around. What's this? False book. It's a hollow book. Great. Okay. Um Is there anything else in here? Hmm. If Eddie has anything to say. You okay? This place? It's like something from my childhood. It's just the private study of a very peculiar man. Yeah, maybe. Okay, well... There's a book missing. There we go, I'm guessing the book goes in there. Hey, hey. A secret door. Mm. Looks like it. Careful. Let me go first. Okay. <laughs> okay, well. Let's wander on in. Now we're talking. Great job, Emily. Okay. Something in here? First meeting, trans. Good to finally meet you, Mr. Hartwood. I'm here on the behalf of your brother, Philip. You were expecting me, weren't you? Yes. You're from the Cerro, no? That's right. I just wanted to ask you a few questions to see if there is anything I can do to help you and your family. Okay. I understand you're full of imagination. You make up a lot of things. I suppose. And you obsess over them, blurring reality and fiction. Sometimes. Do you want to tell me about the Dark Man? No. No, I, I don't. That's all right. Perhaps there is something else you can tell me. Something you know to be made up, but you hold dear. Juan? John? Who's John? No. Juan Luis Jorge. Oh, wait there a moment. Here, take a look. Is he... Oh, he is the author. It's a magnificent book. Life-changing, even. The real one is long dead, but I like to think of him as my, my friend. My most beloved friend. I see. Do you often do this? Fantasize about people you read about? No. No. Well, there is Jacob. Who is Jacob? Turn to the last page. Oh, it's a newspaper article. The Prisoner of Ice, Jacob Van Ostart. Is he also your beloved friend? Oh, no, Doctor. Not at all. He is the fire that fights fire. Yes, I think it's clear your overstimulated imagination, this mania, needs to be tempered for you to live a normal life. I know your family calls it the Hartwood Curse, but I want you to know that there is nothing supernatural about your condition. It's all inside your head. And with that, 
I'm very qualified to deal with. In time, you will be cured. In time, in time. Yes, in time we will exercise all your demons, all the dark men. Yeah! Please, Mr. Hartwood, calm yourself. What happened? Oh, don't you worry your little head about it, Miss Hartwood. Your uncle and I just had our first breakthrough. <sighs> Didn't sound like a breakthrough, it sounded like a breakdown. Good God. Okay. Do you find anything over here? Found anything? Oh, Dr. Gray's in so deep, I knew it. He's as mad as his patients. I mean, look at this. She who can till the soil of this sick world and begin again. The black goat of the woods with a thousand young. Good God. Absolute insanity. Hmm. Okay. This has something to do with the numbers for the talisman. Yeah, okay. What's this? The Snake Dagger. Oh, we have that. The Snake Dagger, a monograph by Yael Klein. In Ludwig Prinz's book on pagan rituals called The Mystery of the Grave, as translated by Nicholas Vachy, there are several references to a sacrificial dagger called the Snake Dagger. It has long been thought of as a poor translation of the original text, that it would be more appropriate with worm dagger from the Latin vermis cultrum. This seems natural following the recent consensus that the original title of Prince's book, The Vermis Mysteris, should literally translate to the mystery of the worm. However, this would take away from Vahi's great effort at translating the underlying meaning of the words and revealing several cultural beliefs. While Preen certainly was using the term worm as a symbol or synecdoche for death and the dead, which is made clear by the contents of the book, in the case of the dagger, we shouldn't be too hasty to dismiss his translation. Reading through Vahi's correspondence with his patron, it appears that he had more than just the Latin text at his disposal. Vahi had dug up Prin's living relatives and uncovered several cross-referenced historical texts and an actual snake dagger. The dagger was dated to the early Middle Kingdom of Egypt and had such a clear shape of a wave that Vahi considered calling it the sinusoidal blade. Knowing the full story, it seems prudent that he chose to translate it as snake and not worm. There are several reasons why this choice of word helps us understand the pagans that Prin's book attempts to describe. The symbolic value of the shape becomes more apparent when reading about the use for the dagger. In the passage of possession and exorcism, we find the snake dagger poisons the poisoner within the victim and is therefore pacified. Where the literal text would tell us that the worm dagger trumps the demon possessing the victim, it tells us nothing of their reasoning, only that somehow this dagger wins against the demon, like it had the better hand in poker. Vahi's translation allows us to follow the underlying logic to the ritual magic that is being performed. Poison the poisoner. Sounds like fighting fire with fire that to hurt the demon possessing its victim, the priests would have to fight back with a power that is known to the evil they are fighting. The snake dagger is therefore not only a good way to describe its form, but it also helps us understand how it could be thought of as a useful tool for exorcism. Finally, it also helps us understand their relationship to lunacy that it was thought of as something poisoning the mind, rather than controlling it. What is also interesting to note is that the possessed are always considered poisoned in their head, and not their heart. The snake dagger always went to the eye of the possessed, leaving them partially blind, if they had the good luck to survive. Hmm. Curious. All right. What? Oh, we need a key for this? Ah, well... Hmm... Ah, what about in... Whoa, whoa! What about in here? Aha, here we go! Anything here? Hmm. 
furniture key. Marvelous. Okay. I can't believe I didn't see that before. Well, it's it's easy to miss, Emily. Okay. Here we go. Furniture key. Huh. Okay. Phone's ringing. Where's the phone? Is the phone back in this office? Hello? Who's there? Jeremy? Jeremy is with the dark man. You can't save him. Jeremy is with the Dark Man? Where? Who is he? What, what is the Dark Man? The Heartwood Curse. He will come for you too. Ooh. No, thank you. Good grief. Oh, okay. Well. Let's have a look at this. Ah. Oh, hey, there you go. Bloody hell, that took some doing. Good grief. So we... Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, okay. Oh. You heard the telephone ring, right? No, the telephone's cut off. I tried calling the police earlier. Oh, God. Yeah, that's what I figured. Oh dear. Well, I guess we know where we're going. Whoa. What? Hey. Mr. Carnby? What? Nothing, right? It's a closet. That's right, Detective. I'll see you later. I have to finish this. You're going inside the closet? Yeah. I know what it looks like, but I can't explain it, much less justify it. All right. You do what you have to do, miss. Goodbye, detective. Hmm. Well, great. Here we are in a very cold-looking place that looks about as much fun As a kick up the backside. Okay. Oh, it looks cold as well. Great. Great, it gets worse. Alright, is there anything anything else here? Oh, there is. Okay. Flares. Brilliant. A flare gun. Okay. Right. Ah, so we're full on flares. We can't take any more flares. An ice pick. We'll take the ice pick, because why not? Cool. What's this? The Greenland Expedition. We found the ancient Stellarium perched on a cliff facing the Arctic Ocean after a day of sailing due north of the Eskimo encampment. Jacob van Ostadt was our most keen member of the expedition. He had been chasing down the source of a peculiar type of crystallized metal present in several sacred items among the natives on the northeast coast of Greenland. The site was a remarkable find for any explorer, and we were all enraptured in our search for enlightenment and meaning. The surviving architecture seemed almost unearthly in origin, and astonishingly sophisticated. The metal Jacob was searching for was abundant, almost ubiquitous. 
We were so taken by our find that we were surprised by the sun falling below the horizon. As we quickly picked up our gear, ready to head back to our camp, Jacob von Ostadt declared that he wanted to stay. He was adamant. We begged him to reconsider. The night would be getting colder by the hour, and we feared for all our safety. Jacob refused, threatening us with violence if we wouldn't leave him alone. As the snowfall turned heavier, we left him there on his own. The next day the weather became worse, and we had to spend hours enforcing our shelter as our tents became increasingly useless. The group had written off Jacob, thinking he must be dead. I had an urge to make one final attempt to save him, so I headed out as darkness fell with a handful of flares and headed toward the coast and up the climb, towards the Stellarium. That's when I saw him, transfixed by a burning sky, that celestial lantern. Jacob keeled over and let out a painful shriek that struck me with such fear and pity. He was crying in agony, for the cold weather had ravaged his flesh. I called out to him, and he turned to face me. His vacant stare held me in place like a needle through a butterfly, and he said, You must leave now, Hashtan. Go, and never come back. And so I left. Good grief. Wow. Well, not, um... Uh the best situation, but I guess we have to wander off into the night. But we will leave it there for today. We'll wander off into the night next time and see just exactly what is going on at this Stellarium. So until next time, be safe, be good, and look after yourselves.